Right, um, we're here with Old Style Music Nights again. I'm Tom. This is Mr. Lou Shields. The legendary Lou Shields. Yeah. <laughs> Lou, it's so good to have you back in Belgium, good in Europe. Um, it's great love, to be here. We love having you over. <laughs> um, we're gonna, just going to start with your introduction. Introduce sure. yourself to the people, to our viewers, to the listeners at the, the Pirate Farm Radio. Tell us who you are, what you do in life, and uh, where you're from, stuff like that. Sure. Well, I'm from a, a, a Chicago, Illinois, uh, just south of that, that, that big city, but I, I lived in the big city uh, for about six years and um, lived out in the country for a while and bounced around, this and that, and, and uh, so uh, back, back from the United States and the Midwest, for those of you from Europe and people back home know what that's all about. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Lou, your music. How would you describe it? Because I've heard people walking into one of your shows like, well, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. Because you don't use like standard 4-4 rhythms. Mm -hmm. It's difficult music to listen to when you're not known or you don't know what, it's, what it is or what it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. So how would you describe it? Well, like, uh... uh, the stuff I do is, is really, really like um, inspired by early American roots music. Uh, and uh, a lot of the stuff that was recorded uh, was always, at the time, live. Uh, one microphone, and it was uh, musicians that were sometimes just doing it for fun, sometimes they were professional, and uh, most of the time they didn't have a band behind them. And so <clears throat> the idea of, of uh, perfect timing and all that kind of thing was probably, in some circles, very much uh, a concern thing. And in other cases, it was more of a thing where it was uh, organic, you might say, yeah. and so depending on the performer's um, kind of emotion in the song, even in the part of the song, it, the tempo might speed up or it might slow down, and it gives this kind of uh, very human approach to that kind of timing, you know. And so I'm not personally a drummer either, but I, I can feel certain rhythms, you know, and and uh, so I, I do some things just by instinct, and. Um, over the over the years, I've been trying to also get a little better at, at you know keeping that kind of thing. But but I, th I feel like there's something raw about it too that that should be kind of also uh, yeah, kept, it's a really raw you know? sound so, that you have. Like. Yeah, so it's fun, you know. But yeah. then, but then not everybody can dance to it, so it's kind of like, <laughs> what is this guy doing? <laughs> he's true. not on the one. He's on the four. He's and on then, the seven. And then on the six, uh, right, six right. Or something. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing now. Yeah. But most most of the time. It drives drummers crazy when they listen to my stuff. <laughs> but then at the end of the show, a lot of times they'll either come up to me and just curse at me, or they'll say, I don't know what you're doing, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a compliment. You know? Yeah, so that's yeah. cool. How did you end up playing like a one-man band? Did you play in bands before? Or was yeah, that like you know, like in the 90s, because I'm older, I played, I played in a lot of bands, uh, just, just little punk bands, little garage bands, playing parties and just goofing around. Um, and then say right something around 1993 certain acts came out and became really popular that i feel like didn't do a very good justice to the music i really loved yeah and so i just went way back to the source and, and then went even further to what i thought the source was and just kept researching and that's when i really got heavily into the, the pre-war country blues uh, delta ragtime you know uh, some yeah. of the some of the early bluegrass stuff, and then I wanted to go even further than that before they had actual record labels and genres of music, before those record labels were formed and started actually marketing specific music to specific people. So I was really searching for that earlier kind of stuff where it was just people that worked all day and, and playing music, and played for music fun. at night for fun. You yeah. know, and that's kind of where my stuff heavily, I feel, you know, is, is sourced from. Cool. Yeah. You're still a teacher, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, still doing that. Uh, you still teach classes? Mm -hmm. How does it go? Because you're touring a lot. And, uh, <laughs> Most people are like, how, how are you doing this? Yeah. You're in Colorado, but you're supposed to be in Chicago teaching. You know, well, I, I have a really flexible schedule. Um, I still teach full time, um, but I, I actually minimalized my schedule personally and, and took a big hit financially uh, doing that, but, but I just feel like Playing music and spreading my art is, is just as important as, as helping out and giving back teaching and 
and uh, the only problem is the time involved. Yeah. You know? So, so I, I work really hard to try to make that happen. Do the students know that what you do musical wise? Or? In the early on, I would kind of tell them, um, and some of them were, were kind of into it. In other words, we're just like, whatever, dude. <laughs> You're not Metallica, man. You know, whatever. So now I don't even tell. <laughs> they know I'm weird and I do weird things. And sometimes I let on a little bit, but I generally don't even bother anymore. <laughs> let them find out. If, if, if they find out and they're interested, then yeah. that's awesome. Indeed. Yeah. But I'm not going to force it on. <laughs> uh, you released an album last year, American Relic, right? Mm -hmm. um, how is that one going? Is it... It's been good, you know. I, I uh, put it out, and, and um, I, I did something. I used to do these these uh, DIY, completely burned EPs, mm -hmm. recorded by myself with one mic, because I was all into the traditional idea, yeah. even though it was digital and it was nothing like you know that. But I felt you know really into that. And then I got really tired of burning out my laptop, and then burning out the CD burners, and then all this. So I decided to go to a studio and record everything live. Uh, but in a studio setting where a sound engineer was, yeah. was doing the it's, levels instead of me. It amazing. So thank you, thank you. I, I, I still can't listen to it because I'm just like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> you hear every it's, little... Oh, God. Yeah. But it's supposed to be not perfect, so that's the idea, right? Are you planning a new album, or...? Yeah, yeah, I have a new one in the can, actually. It's, it's coming out. It's, it's going to be a vinyl-only release. Um, it's going to be called uh, Deep River. And uh, it should be... Hopefully at my mom's house, because <laughs> that's where they're delivering the records uh, when I get back in June to the States. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. It's 10 songs, and uh, it's a, it's a, I've been kind of keeping the album cover under wraps, um, but I'm probably going to put it out into the web pretty soon. All right. I'm pretty excited about it. Because I do all my own drawings, my own album covers as well. We're going to come back to that later. Yeah, okay, so, cool. Uh, <laughs> so. I didn't want to interrupt yeah, no you. Problem. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no problem. So I'm excited about that coming out soon. All right. Um, you're a one-man band. You I used guess. to play with... I'm solo. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're <laughs> just Blue Shields solo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you used to play with other people. Do you find it more difficult to write songs on your own? Like... Well, you know, before when I was playing with other folks, I, I did the same thing. I'd just be alone at night or wherever, and just the song would come to me, and, and then I would come and, and bring it and work with other people in the parts and stuff. But now it's just so easy because I just say, oh, hey, left foot, hey, right foot, what you going to do? You know what you're going to do, and then they just do what they do, and then the rest of it comes together and work it out. So um, for me, it, it's, I, I like it a lot, you know, because it's just uh, so personal. And, and then I can start sharing it with people and seeing what they think or what they like or, you know, let, it, let the song kind of grow yeah. for a while. Do you and miss all. playing with other people, or is it just like, nah, I'm just fine on myself? Well... For a long time, I was fine jamming with people, like in a basement or something, yeah. or at a party, where I didn't have to really do serious things. But I, I had such stage fright performing that that was a, a big thing for me for a long time, which is why I stayed in the living room for a long time, you know. Um, and so now, when I jam with people, that that kind of comfort level I have right now with I'm being on the stage solo goes away. And oh, yeah. I get this anxiety immediately. When like Bruno's over there, let's play a song on a banjo. I'm like, oh, I don't even remember how to play a banjo. You know, I get all scared. And... So I'm, I'm working on that. I'm working on it. A lot of people tell me I need to have like a drummer or I need to have a washboard player or something like that. Yeah. You know? But uh, still kind of solo right now. All right, cool. Uh, you got another one of your big love, the skateboard. Oh, yeah. You got into that probably. Yeah, what? probably when I could walk. I was well, like, on a skateboard. Was it, was it 70s, 80s? Probably late 70s, that's how old I am. Like I had, my folks had uh, these semi-translucent fiberglass boards. Today, somebody would probably say it looks like a long board, but yeah. they're, they're these big old school boards with, uh, they had polyurethane wheels, and but they had really skinny little trucks and you know, the, the, the banana boards people would say. Maybe. Yeah, like now mm -hmm. the, now we have to have like the boards, so they were really small. Yeah, trucks. now yeah. people are back yeah, on yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's where I started, just riding on my butt down the driveway. Yeah. And stuff. Like most of us. Yeah. And then like an old hippie guy would come up, no oh, man, you do like this. And then he would do like a 360 and I would be just like blown away. Whoa. Right? Get a little burt going on the driveway or something. Now so, you're the old guy at the skateboard. Yeah, totally. Old. How do kids react when you, when you roll up? Like... Uh, some of them are used to it because there's a lot of us. Yeah. Old heads coming in there with our gray beard and walking Yeah, we, we don't have that in Belgium. You know, right? <laughs> but uh, 
it, it's usually they're just either like they try to show us all their tricks right away and, and show how pro they are or whatever and yeah. we're just like we never went pro and we don't <laughs> care so just go over there and do it ollie or something i'm gonna go grind this coping now yeah. <laughs> but usually sometimes they're really into it they, you, they think you're from outer space because you're doing all these tricks that they've never seen before you know yeah which is cool like too. a hippie jump and stuff like yeah they're like what is that <laughs> you know so cool uh, you were well a bit earlier like uh, your artwork mm -hmm. how, how, how does that work for you because your art is i really like it right? it's it's rough it's mm -hmm. No disrespect, but it's mm -hmm. it's not like a sophisticated artwork. Yeah, yeah. How is this something that you? Well, I I uh, very similar to my music, you know. Um, I went to art school. I went. I have an MFA in painting. I, I learned how to paint like the old masters. I understand also uh, modern art, abstraction, and all that kind of stuff. I teach art history. I know all yeah, this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. But what resonates the most with me is things that are um, uh, a little more from the heart. Once again, like like some of the music I play, that's a little more simple, a little more basic, and it, I feel it's just so much more honest than kind of constantly uh, positioning yourself as this intellectual or this educated person or this, you know, trying to separate yourself from the classes like you're exceptional. Mm -hmm. To me, I feel like I'm I'm with the people, you know, and I'm going to make art for the people, and hopefully they'll understand it. Hopefully something will resonate, and that that always makes me feel really good when. when People listen to my music, or they see one of my images from the, some of those recent series, and they say, "Wow, there's something about that that I, I don't quite understand it, but I know there's something there." Yeah. And it's like, well, it's part part of the culture. It's part of where we came from, and it's something that you're you're sensing from maybe a past life or something. You know? Yeah. And uh, I really resonate heavily with with old buildings and you know old music and old cars and all that kind of stuff, and, and uh, so it, it greatly inspires me. And, through traveling all over the place, I see all this stuff, and I have all this stuff burned in my head, burned onto my hard drive on my art, my little phone, you know, whatever. And uh, so then, that's where these I'm things come from. I'm gonna pick up there because uh, Busa from uh, Busa sitting over there from Pirate Farm Radio, yeah. he asked me like, ask Lou. Yeah. You post a lot of pictures of uh, old barns, mm -hmm. old buildings, and they look amazing. Like, mm -hmm. Do you? Go look for them, or do you just run into them? They come to me when I'm driving. <laughs> they when I'm driving. They come to me. But usually, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get a feeling. I'll be driving to a gig, and usually, I try to get a, enough time that I have extra time. And I'll be somewhere in rural America, or wherever it is, you know, or Europe, right? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we haven't got Kurt to get off the road yet, but we're going to try. <laughs> he's, he's afraid. Kurt, take a lap. Take a lap. <laughs> but. Uh, so I'll, I'll feel something and I'll see this road and it's like doing these twisty, grindy, up and down. I'm like, mm. there's going to be something there. And I just turn my nav off and I tell Siri to shut up <laughs> and I get, get the, that, that, that gravel road. And then pretty soon there's this old house, this old barn, this fence that's fallen over, whatever. And, and, and that's big inspiration for me because well, it is for us too. it's just disappearing, you know. Yeah, and, and in the United States, uh, uh, there, some people are preserving. Some people are just they just mow that stuff down and yeah. throw it out. Or you know, some people are now rebuilding with all the reclaimed materials, which is great. But then again, these buildings are also disappearing again. Yeah. You know? So it's kind of like, ooh. I was talking to Bruno about it this morning. Like Mississippi is pretty much picked over now. Like a lot of those old buildings you would hope to see, you really have to search for them. Oh, really? In some of the states, though, you can find them everywhere. In other places, it's less. Know, depending on the weather. Thing is, it's the same here. Yeah, like, yeah right. Disappearing. Yeah, because they want the big right. corporation latest yeah. fad building to be stuck Square, in there. Square, concrete, right? Stuff, garbage. Uh, yeah. It'll fall down in ten years, and then they'll build something else. <laughs> yeah, and, that's true. That's, the, that's that's actually the meaning of it. Yeah, that, that's what you know. Like you look at one of those old barns. You go inside of it. Every single, uh, you know, timber was hand uh, milled yeah. by hatchets. You know, depending on if they had a mill in town, then it would be, you know, sawn by a big old, you know, monster uh, saw. But uh, some of them were just done just by hand, you know, and, and it's just so amazing to see that, you know. And you go into one of those old houses and you look under the floor and there's the floor joists are trees. That, yeah, are just, yeah. that are just under there holding that house up, you know, which is unbelievable, you know, to think about for, for me, <laughs> you know. And the same thing I get when I go to Rome or something and I see these these blocks that were cut, you know, 
and, like, and yeah. informed, you know, 2,000 years ago, and it's like, whoa, you know, I love all that stuff, so. Right, we got one more fan question. Um, Stefan, bass player from uh, Black and Bone Squad. Oh, cool. He wanted to know, like, who are your musical heroes? Heroes? If you have any. I have a lot, you know. A ton. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, obviously, I love Charlie Patton a lot. Yeah. You know, Blind Lemon Jefferson was one of the big guys, you know, for me. And it's, in terms of the older uh, pre-war guys, you know, there's so many, you know, uh, um, that, that come to mind. Um, but uh, a lot of a lot of the, the country blues and Delta guys, the Texas guys, the Piedmont um, genre, you know, yeah. that whole thing. Um, and uh, you know, I could just list a whole lot of names. Yeah. yeah. Recently, though, I I, I, I got into this. Um, the second kind of wave uh, was recorded by a guy named George Mitchell, similarly to what Alan Lomax did. Yeah. But uh, the, the artists that he recorded uh, in the late 60s are, are amazing as well. It, it, but some of them are actually using electric guitars and stuff, which is really cool. Uh, something for me to get dig into even further. And There's just so much stuff out there, though, you know. I, I would say, like, many, many, many influences. It would take me an hour to go through. <laughs> We're going to close on the interview, but not yeah. before you tell us a crazy, weird, scary story that you, <laughs> something happened on the road. Something that happened on the road. Or in your earlier crazy years. Like UFO stuff, or? I know, man. <laughs> uh, it's all up to you. I I've, I've heard you tell stories, uh, and I would love to hear another one. So, uh, well. I could tell you about like a near car accident that turned into a crazy conversation. Go with ahead. This guy. Well, okay, so I was in Idaho traveling, and, and it was about two or three in the morning, and I was trying to get to a place so I could stop off the highway safely and just sleep because I just sleep, you know, wherever. But you always got to get a good spot so you yeah. don't get killed. And, uh, <laughs> so I was in the middle of the desert at this point. You find that to be a good place to sleep? <laughs> Generally, as long as, as, long as, no as, long as you're off the road, you know, <laughs> don't want anybody running into you or something, you know. So, so I was just about there, and I was pretty awake. I was good, and I saw, you know, the semi truck way, way in the distance, and suddenly I saw the lights doing all kinds of swerviness. I'm like, oh! So I get way over to the left, and then I keep getting further over, further over. I was pretty like, because I saw this nuts, nuts stuff going, and I and I get close to the semi and. Suddenly, a piece of metal shoots underneath my, my car. I had the little car at the time. And it, it hit both tires on the passenger side. So, boom, boom, double flat. <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting over to the side at this point and uh, get in front of the semi. And I notice there's three other cars that are also all flat tire. And I guess a, a tire off of a pickup truck uh, fell off. And the semi truck hit it first and flattened that thing out completely. Oh, really? <laughs> and I hit it as a flat sheet of metal. And everybody else had spare tires. I needed an extra spare tire. <laughs> so I had to wait. And uh, this truck driver pulls up with a huge semi wrecker to pull a little bitty Honda. <laughs> so we had to jack the car up to get it on the wrecker. And he's, he, was, he was, this is no lie, he was a one legged Vietnam veteran um, tow truck driver that started telling me all about. Uh, the salt flats in the United States, and a lot of people go to this one very famous one where they do drag racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he started telling me about all the other salt flats, where, <coughs> where the aliens land, and the government tests stuff, and, and all kinds of crazy things happen. And he was going to take me there, but he's like, "I gotta get home, buddy." You know. So he dropped me off at like, you know, this this tire shop, and I slept in the parking lot. Luckily, they were open in the morning, and got back on the road. Back on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, uh, this was All Style Music Nights. It should have been a beagle session, but we forgot the beagle. Oh. Um, this is Lou Shields. I'm Tom. We're signing off. All right. Bye. <laughs>